Can women be addicted to sex, to porn, to self-behavior? Yes, yes, and yes. That is our topic today. I've had many women help me with this research in our book, She Has a Secret. You're going to be amazed at what you learned today, and there is help. Now, if you haven't subscribed, please do. And ladies, if you have a question, they're confidential. Go ahead and send them. We'll respond to you as quick as possible. So stay tuned. Sex addiction is not just a men thing. It is also involving millions of women. Women are looking at pornography and engaging in online sexual behavior at record numbers. It is a real issue. And if you are her, I want you to listen. There is no shame in this. I'm Dr. Doug Weiss. I'm the president of the American Association for Sex Addiction Therapy. I've been helping men and women deal with sexual addiction. Our book, She Has a Secret, has the research of many women who've asked me to write this book, their stories and their recoveries. So there is hope. But if you're a female sex addict, you could believe if someone really knew you, they wouldn't love you. And it's not true. You're living a double life, whether it's with your porn, with yourself, with your toys, or with um, others going out one night stands. You have all kinds of consequences from this. Our statistics show depression is very common. Other addictions like alcohol, entertainment, and other things are in your life to medicate this. Our research shows that there's a huge chance that you've been sexually abused, a huge chance that you've been raped, not just once, but multiple times. The pain that you carry from STDs, the other issues that you have as far as guilt and shame because of who or what you've done, it's all really common for someone who's a sex addict. And you can heal from this. Now, are you a sex addict? Let's just walk through that. Have you tried to stop? So you know what, I gotta stop this. This is out of control. And then do it at a point. If you've made promises to yourself, you know, I'm gonna stop this. And then you did it at a point, okay? If you have had consequences because of your sexual addiction, you've lost a job, you've lost significant relationships, um, you've had other kinds of consequences like STDs or other things that have hurt you, then at a point. If you've had consequences and then you kept doing it at a point, okay? If it's taking more and more of your time, Okay, you're doing less, say, activities like working out or having a social life, and it seems like you're really not having girlfriends, okay, unless that's your particular type of sexual behavior. You're really isolating, and it's just getting online or finding that person or going to the club, and that is your life, and it's becoming more and more consuming than at a point, okay? These are some of the things, and if, you know, you, you've tried to stop, you've cried, you've prayed, you've You've had all, all kinds of consequences, but you keep using. And this is a real problem, and you already know that. I'm not telling you something you don't know. I know I'm a recovering sex act. I've been sober for over 36 years. I know what it's like to have the double life, to feel the pain, to have consequences, to keep using, to feel crazy, to not understand my own behavior. Like, why did I do that? I didn't need to do that. I already had sex this morning. Why did I do that tonight? And, and, and spending hours and hours of time looking at pornography or stories or online or Facebook or other ways of hooking up. Oftentimes women, they tend to find that women have a particular way that they recruit. Uh, they either have a, a certain type of person, whether it's wealth, power, physique, or just someone they want to control. Uh, sometimes uh, they have a uniform that they use to go uh, seduce men, whether it's uh, their, what they wear to the gym, or they wear their yoga stuff out to the you know, Whole Foods, or, their, or they have power suits, or they have some kind of you know, seduction technique that they use. They have rituals in, in preparing for acting out. And, and you know if you are a sex addict. That's not news. Now, what might be news is there's help. In our book, She Has a Secret and Secret Solutions, that's a workbook. You can actually start working through this. There are phone groups you can get involved with. You can get into counseling by calling my office. 
All of these things are possible for you to heal. Now, it's not just stopping the sexual addiction. You're going to have to find out what caused it. If you've been sexually abused, if you have abandonment issues with, you know, dad or mom, or if you've been raped and you've never told anyone, she has a secret. It's really not just a secret about your addiction. Oftentimes, and most times, with the female sex addicts I've worked with over 36 years, there is a secret, whether it's an abortion, whether it was uh, incest, or whether it was some other kind of thing that you have taken responsibility for that wasn't your responsibility. It's not your responsibility for sexually abused or raped. You're not damaged goods, okay? You can heal, you can be free, you can have intimacy. And a lot of the uh, female sex hacks have what we call intimacy anorexia. They actually avoid real intimacy. Uh, they, they, they can be married and avoid intimacy spiritually and emotionally and sexually with their husband and then go out and have multiple affairs because they, they fear being intimate. They fear if they're really known, they won't be accepted and loved. And so they withhold love. They're too busy for their spouse. They blame their spouse. Uh, they withhold spiritually, emotionally, sexually. They won't talk about their feelings with their spouse. If those are going on with you, then you have intimacy, anorexia, and sex addiction. And that definitely needs to be addressed. I would encourage you to just, you know, um, go ahead and look up intimacy, anorexia. We have many videos on that on YouTube, as well as the website, intimacyanorexia.com. Being a female sex addict, you feel unique, but you're not. There are so many of you right now. And oftentimes you don't seek help. Our research shows that most don't seek help. And our research also shows that, you know, they've been seduced even in therapy because they share their desires and the male therapist has an issue. So if you go to therapy, I'd recommend you probably start with a, a female that is specialized in sexual addiction treatment. Don't go to a general practitioner because they might not be able to help you. And you also may need to look at uh, depression, uh, bipolar. There are other things that could be happening with you. So this is a real journey for you. And I hope that you take the journey because I've worked with the women who get better and they feel more whole. They love themselves again. They take better care of their body. Uh, they're better moms and they're better spouses and they're more engaged. They're not afraid to be intimate and they, they may need to be accountable for a while. You, you probably need to be in a support group. And if you're married and you've been caught, you might need to take a polygraph to verify that you're not connecting, communicating, emailing, FaceTiming these people to be in your life. And another form of sexual addiction for women that's not really addressed is what we call intrigue addiction. This is where you're getting those little hits off of guys uh, or women and you're, and you're getting this energy and you're trying to, you're constantly kind of grooming, flirting, kind of finding out where the line is with that person. And then sometimes you cross the line, but intrigue addiction is its own thing. And if you go to um, sexaddict.com, S-E-X-A-D-D-I-C-T.com, uh, the intrigue addiction uh, video might be really helpful if you're the person who's always wanting to get sexual attention and sexualizing and flirting and doing that kind of thing and seeing how far you can, you know, play with people like that. And it's really important, like you have a route of people that you do that with regularly, whether it's the gym, the coffee shop, the, at the office, or when you're out doing things. So if you have the intrigue addiction alongside of your sexual addiction, you got to work with that as well. This is a journey and I hope you take it. Well, my heart is that this is helpful for you to at least validate what you're experiencing is real. You are not alone. You don't have to be alone. There is help and you could be free. You could be free from sexual addiction. I've been free for 36 years and it's been verified by a polygraph. I know what it's like to be trapped. I know what it's like to be free. Free is so much better and free is what I want you to have. So please reach out. That's the most important thing. Don't keep this a secret. As soon as you reach out, you can start healing. Now, if you haven't subscribed, please do, because we have lots of things that would help you. And if you have a question, I want you to put it in there. We'll, we'll respond to you um, as soon as possible. So please take your step to heal if you have a sexual addiction.